Just keep paddling, just keep paddling, just keep paddling. Hello, welcome back to 340 Paddler, and today we're going to talk about Caw Point and the start. Now, if you're sitting there going, wow, he's talked about this before. Yes, I have, but I am updating this series because, of course, a lot of information has changed in the three or four years since I did the original videos. So, let's start at Caw Point. Now, of course, the first place you're probably going to go after going to the hotel and dropping off your bags and saying hi to your friends and all of that is going to be to go to Caw Point. And you're probably going to go and drop off your boat, probably on Monday. And it's going to look something like this. Some guy with a freaking orange river hawk taking up all the prime space while Charles Giddish tries desperately to put his boat next to it. But that being said, this is a great time to drop off your boat drop off your boat, anything that's not of great value. We've not had things stolen as far as I know, but most people will keep electronics and those sorts of things until the morning of the race to bring down. But you can bring down your boat, your PFD, etc. By that point, your PFD probably stinks from training anyway. No one really wants to steal it. Uh, it will look something like this. So real estate is really at a premium here. You're going to line up your boats, try and put them in the shade that's usually beneficial and line them up all the way down this path to the point. If you show up very early, you'll be able to get a spot near the ramp. If you show up a little bit later, you'll be further back towards the point. Doesn't matter, but make sure when you're moving your boat around that you don't sit on someone else's boat, you don't run into someone else's boat. Some of these are far more fragile than others. So, You've dropped off the boat. You've gone to the safety meeting. Of course, you went to the safety meeting. It was up at the hotel on Monday night. And now it's the morning of the race. What do you do? Well, first of all, let's look at a basic schedule of what I usually do. This has worked for eight years. Hopefully, it will continue to work. Around four or five in the morning, I get up. Uh, this is all designed for the solo start, so add an hour if you're a tandem. I generally eat breakfast by 5. Uh, I'm trying to get off to Caw Point by 5.30, 6.30. That's why I'm prepping the boat and launching. Honestly, I take my time. Uh, I could prep the boat much, much faster, but I want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. So I'd rather slow it down and take my time a little bit. Also, make sure you put your lights on your boat right away. Trust me, it will make life easier further down the river. And then take the boat. Go across the Kansas River. There's usually uh, some sandbars. We'll see that in a minute. Get out, stretch, wait for the start. About 6.45, I'll get back in the boat and go upriver of the boat ramp. And basically, I'm going to relax up there. It doesn't matter if I'm trying to be competitive or I'm simply trying to finish the race. I'm just going to relax. The race, unless you're shooting for top three, is not determined in the first 10 miles. So... Be realistic. Don't line up at the front unless you're aiming for sub 50 or faster. And if you are up to the front, there are always issues with that as well. You have guys sprinting from behind you, etc. So kind of pick out some real estate. Be realistic. The race really doesn't start until after you're on the Missouri River. 7 a.m. for the solos is go time. Now, this year things have changed. You will need, and this year being 2020, you will need to text in from Caw Point. This will be necessary. It's to verify that you have everything working, that you understand how the text in program works. If you have problems, look for a volunteer. Uh, usually they're wearing vests or something else. Uh, or you can find someone who looks like a veteran who will probably help you out or just start asking random people. One of them will be veteran ground crew, etc., who can show you how to do this. But you must text in. Otherwise, they're going to track you down and the Reaper is going to eat you. Now, of course, when you're sitting there at the ramp, it's going to take some time to launch. The ramp frequently looks like this. Everyone's standing around waiting. Of course, no one wants to get in the river early. You should, but what can you do? Well, first of all, the ramp will be incredibly busy. Uh, we see pictures like this 
every year. Everyone is trying to get down the ramp, usually from 6.30 to 7. You need to get in the water before 6.30 if you are solo. Just trust me on this. So where else can you launch? And this is where I start making use of Google Maps. Uh, so first, you can launch from the point. Uh, usually, it's a fairly good spot to launch. So all the boats will be parked down in this area. Uh, just to give you some idea, the boat ramp is right here. You can walk down this path and launch off the point, which is really this entire area here. I would not recommend launching from the Missouri side because then you have to make this really difficult turn, but uh, stay on the Kansas River side. There's plenty of real estate to use. A lot of people launch there. Just they won't let you launch when they're about to fire a cannon for some odd reason. There is, so that's launching from the point. Then there's another alternative, and this appeared in 2018. I was standing, I was, well, not standing, I was sitting in my boat watching people do things, waiting for the race to begin. I noticed people taking the path the other way. So here again is the boat ramp itself, but people were following the path here, and then you kind of go up and down and around, and there's a path down this way. Now, that may have been there for construction, so it may not be a permanent path, but it might be something you could potentially get through. And what they were doing is they were launching directly under I-70 down this gravel walkway. There are at least three boats that did so. So Monday, go scout it out. See if this is something you can do. It might not be available, but if it is, it might be worth the longer walk to have a nice relaxing launch rather than being, you know, pushed out into the river uh, rather unceremoniously as 300 other people are desperately trying to get into their boats and get into the river. Let's talk about the start. The start is interesting, usually. Now, in years past, I have said to follow the left line off the Kansas River. And I still stand by that with this little caveat, which is everyone does it. Um, so suddenly I put out a video saying stick to the left as you go in because everyone else is going to shoot for the straighter direction and here you're going to hit the river faster you're going to catch up anyway what happened is after i put that video out everyone took the left so it's sort of a morning of decision look at where people are lining up the one place you don't want to be is do not line up on the far side for the start why because there is an outlet up here that's dumping sewerage you don't really want to hit that also all of this is a sandbar which means shallow water and slow travel so you don't want to be there by the way this is the mud bank that I was talking about stopping on uh, so when you launch go across sit over here no one else is sitting over here and relax until the race starts so let's talk about this issue of the confluence this is the only time in the race you're going to come across a confluence and it can be tricky this is our satellite view of the confluence obviously in high water but it does give you an interesting view so as you take that left line it's a very straight line so here from the boat ramp you would come in and then of course when you hit the Missouri it's going to turn you that way and you want to hit this at speed preferably sprint this short distance uh, as you move into the Missouri if you take more of an inside line there is not a strict line for the Missouri but there is a different problem a this is fairly shallow in here and B if you end up in a certain position usually somewhere in here there can be basically a pretty substantial whirlpool people have spun their boats so try and stay out of the middle take the left take the right if you need to line up behind people, perfectly fine. Personally, I'm still going to take the left. I almost always take the left line. I like it. I know what it's going to do. 
and I'm going to go straight in. If you're a little more cautious, you're in a tippy boat, etc., take the right line and let the fast guys pass and bust through there and then line up and go through. Just trust me, it will make life easier. You don't want to be tied up in the chop and everything else. So, as you move through, and here you can see some of that sandbar that develops on the inside. So as you come through, you're also going to come into one of the fastest parts of the Missouri River because it's a very uh, tight bend. So you can easily be doing over 10 miles an hour once you hit the water here. Don't get too excited. It will slow down. And basically follow the leader all the way through, through the various bridges of Kansas City. So that should get you uh, to the Missouri River, and next time we will pick up on our way to Lexington, give you all that little information that you need to make your race a little more survivable. Until next time, this is 340 Paddler. Keep your paddle in the water.